Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com. Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. If you enjoy our conversations, make sure you subscribe, share it with a friend. Today, we're exploring with Joe McQuillan. Joe is a regular guy who's spiritual path came knocking. Welcome, Joe. Hey, thank you, Linda. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I'm really excited for this conversation, actually, Joe, because you took a really difficult circumstance in your life. And somehow that opened a whole new level of understanding and exploration. Can you share a little bit about what started it for you? Sure. And, and, you know, it's, it's funny, you starting off with, uh, how I, I took something so tragic and, and now I, I'm, I'm using the messages to help other people. There was a line from a wonderful book called the shack, where it was a, a father had lost his daughter very tragically. And, uh, and he went and visited God and God was played by a woman and, and, and an African-American woman and, and, you know, in, in this set. And, and God said to him, just because I work incredible good out of unspeakable tragedies, doesn't mean I orchestrate the tragedies. So I think that's what I'm doing now is trying to work as much good I can out of this tragedy. I can't unring that bell, the events of January 3rd, 2016, but I can do something good with it. So uh, just briefly, you know, in 2016, January, uh, my son and a bunch of his friends all went up to a lake house in Lake in uh, in, in in Lake Beulah, Wisconsin, to kick up their heels the last day of, of Christmas vacation. They were all going back to school, and uh, and he was supposed to come home the next day. You know, they were shooting pool. There was a dozen of them. There was a big lake house. One of the kids owned shooting pool, drinking, kicking up their heels. And then they got back to the house to finish the party and shoot pool and play ping pong and, and whatever. And at three o'clock in the morning, my son and three of his friends decided to go outside, saw a boathouse, jumped in a three-man canoe, you know, with a snoot full of alcohol and untied Timberland boots, layered clothing, and a half-frozen lake. Four of them paddled out. None of them made it back. You know, on the way... Uh, I got a, I, we were supposed to watch a, I grew up in Buffalo, New York and we're big Buffalo Bills fans now, but we were supposed to watch a, a game against uh, the Raiders. How's that? That I'd even remember that stupid fact that that next day when I was texting him, buddy, where are you? And uh, I got text from uh, the kids whose family owned the, the, the lake house and it said, Mr. McHugh, Chris and three friends are missing. So I grabbed the Labrador, jumped in the Jeep, headed up halfway up. I got a call that said, it's uh it's no longer a search, but it's a recovery. All four are drowned. You know, you go into a bit of shock. Um, but one thing I will tell you is that 16 years before I had seen a medium, and I don't look like a guy that would do that. And at that point in time, I wasn't. It's more of a curiosity or whatever. And and uh, and the medium, most of the reading, she's a wonderful gal, Nancy Myers. Uh, I had seen her you know, back around 2000, 2001, and she said, went through a, a reading that wasn't really impactful. A lot of people died on my side, crossed over, but nobody that much out of line, out of, out of sequence, you know. And so she told me at the end of this, that your dad's here and he's telling you railroad and showing a caboose. And if you look behind me, there's a railroad lantern on my, on my bookcase. We were a railroad family. Dad worked on the railroad for 40 years. All the boys worked on the railroad during school. I worked a couple of years afterwards. And so when she told me that, it was an aha, like, huh. I didn't get the secrets to the universe. I didn't get the lottery numbers, you know, but I knew that Iron Joe was somewhere and he could connect with me. I put that in my mental file cabinet, closed the door 15 years later when I needed it, driving up to Lake Beulah, Wisconsin. The thought came to me, if my dad's somewhere, then Chris is with him. That's how my family worked. 10 kids, Irish Catholic family. That's how it worked. And I decided to start trying to find out what all that meant. I wasn't ready to face a world devoid of my boy, but I will tell you, Linda, I was a 
you know, I was a car dealer. I was a union guy. I was a railroad, you know, um, I've had much more success than I've ever been entitled to. Um, but, but one thing I never was, was a naive guy. So, you know, if this was hokey BS, let's figure it out now and take it off the list. I started a journey, wonderful book by a guy named Bob Olson, who was also a guy's guy. And it started me on this, this path to connect with my son, which I've successfully done. So it's been six years. You've discovered that the spiritual path is not hokey. <laughs> Far from it. Maybe a little hokey, but very real. How's that? Within everything, right? Within everything, there is, you know, shadow and light here in this world. So there are some kind of hokey things out there, even in the spiritual. Yeah, for sure. Legit and very real. And a really big part of my life. I, I actually feel at this point in my life that I'm still a dad. I'm still an employee. I'm still a husband. You know, I think I, at this point, I have about one foot on each side of the, of the veil. You actually started communicating with your son, correct? I did. How's that? Right. That's amazing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that unfolded? And, you know, let's, let's flip that, that he started communicating with me and I just woke up. So it was the anniversary of his crossing. This first year I saw a bunch of mediums, amazing mediums, uh, you know, I mean, just a world class. It, it was amazing what I've, what, what I was, I experienced. And I, and I cataloged every visit. And then later on, I started recording them all, you know, so I could then transcribe. My thought was that I'm just going to write all these down so that, you know, someday, not in that long future, I'll be sitting on a rocking chair in a porch reviewing this to stay close to my kid. And that was what I thought the plan was. I was wrong, by the way. But in this thing about the other side, I'm not. So on the anniversary, uh, the, the room I'm sitting in now is my home office that was Christopher's bedroom grown up. So it's a, it's a thin place. It's, he had a happy childhood. We love each other. We're close. He and I were really, really close. I think we were both a little wild, you know, in my youth, I'm 36 years sober and I was wild. And, uh, and so when I saw a little of that kind of spark in him, I knew where it came from. It was came from my side of the family. So uh, I'd come in here and I started getting woken at three o'clock in the morning. Now I thought that I was being woken at three o'clock in the morning because we knew that he drowned between three and four o'clock. As a matter of fact, a visit just recently, he told me it was 346 that he actually transitioned. So on the first anniversary, I'm sitting here and, I, and, and like I said, the, year, you know, in the, in the previous year, I'd wake up, I'd come in here, I'd light sage, I'd meditate. I try to just feel him. And on this day, at three o'clock in the morning, I started getting downloads and said, hi, pop. You know, this place is amazing. Where do you see it? The colors, you know, the love. It's, it's like love air. It, we're never cold. It's wonderful. And he said, you know, you're not going to believe it. And then he said something which really helped validate that it wasn't my mind writing, you know, telling me to write these things down. I had a legal pad on my desk just because of work, and I started writing everything down, transcribing exactly as he said it. And the one thing he told me is I got to let go of resentment. He said, Dad, you got to let go of the resentment with Scotty. He was a good friend. I loved him. He loved me. You know, it wasn't his fault. Now, what that was about is the kids whose parents owned the lake house. You know, you know there's a dozen kids kicking up their heels, drinking, no supervision, but they were 21 and 22. They weren't babies. But I still had a resentment. I'm Irish. They say Irish Alzheimer's is where you forget everything but the grudges, you know? So I held on to this resentment and Chris was telling me I couldn't, and I didn't want to let it go. I wasn't ready to let it go, Linda, but I did. And I said to him, all right, pal, for you, anything. Flash forward 12 hours. I get a text from his friends that say, Mr. McHugh, some of his college buddies, we're going to meet at the grave at three 30. Can you swing by? And Sally and I were going to go to the grave because it was the anniversary. We were going to go at sundown and release a Chinese lantern. Like we had a plan, right? We had flowers. We had all this. Well, the plan changed. And, uh, and the Greeks always say that man plans and gods laugh, right? So I show up at this grave and there's cars, certain circular parking lot filled up. There's 40 kids at the grave. And the first kid I greeted was Scotty, the kid I was holding resentment for that I let go of 12 hours earlier. And I hugged him and cried and told him it wasn't his fault. It could have been at my house. It could have been at a neighbor's house, you know, because he was racked with guilt. So my kid was not only he was scolding me not to hold on to resentment. He was also preparing me for this meeting 
when I wasn't awkward or ducked or you know made anybody made anything worse. So that started this journey that continues to this day. About twice a month, I get awoken at three o'clock in the morning. I come in, do all the things that a guy with a brush cut and a broken nose doesn't look like you do. I light sage. I meditate. I align my chakras, breathing in, holding it for seven seconds, exhaling with Christopher's name, pictures, candles, crystals. You know, I, mean, I certainly don't look like that kind of guy. I mean, literally two years ago, I hung up my hockey skates at 63. So, you know, but I do this because it gives me the edge. It gives me the advantage. You know, I thought he was giving me these downloads for me. And a year later, I found out that it wasn't for me, that I was supposed to write a book and share it with other parents. It's good for anybody who's lost anybody, but for other parents who have lost kids. And that was the path. And that was a path. It must have been quite a surprise for you that very first time. You know, it was and it wasn't. I mean, if you think about it, 15 years before, I was being prepped for this without even knowing it. And then coming in here, literally just to grieve and, and to feel them around me. And I knew a little bit about energy, but I didn't know much. It's not that I didn't believe in God or the other side. I just, it never came into play, right? It wasn't a, something that was a day-to-day -day, you know, consideration. After Christopher transitioned, I saw an amazing movie called What Dreams May Come. My husband's favorite movie. And it really helped clarify what all this was about. So Robin Williams gets killed in a car accident. Cuba is his spirit guy. And Robin Williams can't put this together. What's going on? Why am I here with you? And Cuba Gooding said, the origin of the word body is the Anglo-Saxon boat, which means a boat, which is what the physical body is, a transient dwelling for the real self. He said, like you're in your house right now. You're in your house. That doesn't mean you are your house. If your house falls down, you get up and walk away. And it came, it clicked that this is just a transient dwelling for my real self, which is my spirit. And as I've gone on this journey, I've learned that I've been through this journey more than once. I've been on this journey with Chris more than once. Uh, the reason we were so amazingly comfortable, even though I was his dad, was that we had gone through lifetimes together as siblings. So there's this really unbelievable comfort level that, that came from our relationship. And it, and, and, and it took a little while for me to try to, you know, I, like I said to you earlier, I, I'm ankle deep in the knowledge of this. You know, it's not like I'm an expert. Six years, I'm still playing catch up, right? But not bad for a blue collar kid from Buffalo, New York, you know? Exactly. And willing to share with the world. I'm supposed to, I mean, it's not just willing. I'm supposed to. You know, and here's the thing. You got to give it away to keep it. I've given this amazing gift. I mean, amazing. I feel them. I've seen them only on a couple of occasions in meditation. I want, to, want that more. He comes through with mediums. He comes through to me. I feel them. I smell them. I can sense them. This is an amazing gift. I, don't, I didn't earn this. I didn't deserve this. I was given this gift. But the secret is I got to give it away to keep it, right? I can't hoard this. I can't be like Scrooge McDuck you know, holding, holding this all in. This is for other people. You know, one of the first interviews I ever did was a radio station in, I think, Dallas. And the woman said, what do you tell people that just don't buy in? I said, tell them to change the channel. You know, I'm not trying to sell you anything, right? But if you've lost somebody, specifically a child, you know, you're who I want to connect with. You're who I want to tell. I want to look in your eye. I want to tell you, your kids are still right here. You can do this. Yeah. And you will not find that miracle or that magic if you're not open to receiving it. Right. And you've got to be open. And what's, you know, I always, I laugh. I'll say, look, try this. And if it doesn't work, we'll refund your misery. Right. What's, what do you think's worse? You know, you know, working and stumbling and trying to connect or thinking that it's all over. You know, we're just a, 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 a rice paper wall separated from the other side. They're there. And the parents who are listening to this, your kids are knocking on the door saying, come on, on the window, open up. Let's talk about this. And they're the same kids, same personality, same, same humor, same everything. Yeah, your parents as well, right? My dad is in a support role. 
he's come through. My sister Marsha actually has come through, who was a, this is a pretty cool story. She was Christopher's godmother, and one of my favorite people in the whole world. She's just, she was magnificent. And she transitioned February 6, 2019. And Chris was there and helped her across. But she had, was a real source of love for both of us and support. Even when I wasn't lovable, she loved me. And, uh, and she was tough too. You know, she didn't, she didn't put up with my hooliganism. And, uh, and a couple of days before she died, I was with her in Florida. And she said, honey, you gave me the greatest gift. I read your book and I'm not afraid to die. A year ago or two years ago on my birthday in January, 2020, I went to a medium out in the West Suburbs, Jill Nicole, lovely gal. Chris came through. He said, but there's another person here, a woman with brown glasses, pretty, you know, who says she's got the title of aunt, mother, and sister. Because she was Christopher's aunt, his godmother, kind of a mom to me, and, and my sister. And she said to tell you, honey, thank you for giving me the greatest gift. You know, because of you, I wasn't afraid to die. You know, I mean, wow. What a gift that is to give humanity really what a gift i'm just passing it along i mean it's been given to me literally i'm just following the breadcrumbs and i'm just trying to share it because i don't want anybody's parents anybody who's lost a kid or any loved one to think it's over that you're not going to see them again or even for oneself yeah right for oneself so when you talk to chris yeah is it more personal related to your own personal life or does he teach you about the spirit world and the nature of human life absolutely great question so i go to his grave all the time all the time it's perfect it's beautiful it's got a celtic cross it's got a buffalo bills logo it's black granite it's it's pristine and i keep that thing standing tall his friends will come and all of a sudden there'll be a beer cap or a, a memento from Glacier National Park or something, you know, from them or flowers from some of the gals. I mean, there were 2,000 people at this kid's wake, 2,000. And, and so, you know, I go there all the time. It's a thin place for me. I sit there with a chair, with a cigar, with my Labrador, and I talk to him out loud. But at three o'clock in the morning in my room, I go into a meditative state. And he starts downloading a message to me. It's not Q and A. He's telling me things. And he's and it is mostly lessons. A lot of what it's like over there. He's told me that our side, my side, is like football camp. It's a lot of work, a lot of sweat, but it's a lot of fun and camaraderie. And you're with your friends. He said his house, his place is like a beach house, a beach bungalow, he said, on Maui. Every day's perfect. You do what you want. It's amazing. But you have a job over there. He helps younger kids transition. He helps kids that are freaking out. He's actually now helping kids on our side who don't know what to do when they've lost a sibling. You know, so these are messages I get from him and he tells me. And then he tells me things about what I need to do and how I need to share. When I was writing the first book, I'd see a medium and he'd say, you know, are you writing a book? I said, yeah. He goes, because Chris says, get going. I said, dude, I'm doing this. I can, I'm getting reprimanded by my kid. I got a job too. I'm getting it all done. The first book I promised to have done by Father's Day of 2018. And I did. And it was published by Thanksgiving. And the next book I promised to have done by his birthday, April 15th of 2021. And I did. Wonderful that the two of you are partnering together. And bringing that wisdom here into this plane, because we really do need it. You know, what I talk about all the time, Lynn, is that everything I write in that book, and it's everything that comes from him is italicized, right? I don't edit it. The next day I will get up and I will get a fine point pen to make sure I can identify my handwriting in the middle of the night. Um, but I don't edit it. I don't punctuate. I don't change that. I give those messages directly directly as he gave them to me. You know, he told me not long ago that when I transition, he'll be there, but I have to cross over that stream by myself. I have to take that step and then he'll be there. I never thought of that. You know, he can't meet me halfway. And in this version, 
it was a stream in the woods that I would cross over and he'd be there. But Marcia died of, of cancer, which she had had five years, battled it, and finally said, I'm done. He promised that he'd be there. He said, Dad, when she crossed over, we were all there. But then she had to go somewhere. And he said, when she came back, he said she had to go somewhere like a spa. And when she came back, she was younger than when I was a kid. Now, it took me a little while to figure this out, being a regular guy and not always the sharpest knife in the drawer. That what he was talking about is Marsha's cancer stayed with her body on this side, but the trauma crossed with her spirit. So she had to go somewhere. And what better way for a woman to think about the process than a, a spa, right? Who doesn't like going to a spa? So she went to a spa to remove that trauma and then join the family, the soul family. Particularly difficult lifetimes. I think the spirit does need some healing and rejuvenation before it can take on its role in the spirit world. I agree 100%, just like you said. So Joe, you mentioned before that there are some places you go to where the veil is yes. thin. Yes. So do you think that's a state of mind or is that just some place that holds that connection? I did a chapter on thin places, which I was really proud of. So this room is particularly a thin place because his spirit was here since a child. Very happy. It's kind of funny story is I actually moved him over from one plot to another. It was January uh, 10th, 2016, we buried him, you know, snow covered, frigid, desolate. I, I love his, uh, his cemetery. It's open 24 hours. I go there all the time. And by the way, it's not like some old man sitting on a park bench feeding pigeons. I go there because his energy meets me there. He doesn't live there. And we connect. It's a good spiritual place. And I go there all the time. And, and so I tell people, if you get this in, you know, kind of some kind of instinct or higher calling, even if it sounds crazy, do it, right? Now, I went to Sedona, which is a thin place because of the energy and the vortex. And it was okay. I was really disappointed. I went to Lilydale, which is the oldest spiritual community in the country in upstate New York, 40 minutes from where I grew up, believe it or not. Didn't even know it was there. And it was unbelievable. I was actually expecting to be let down because I... I had been let down at Sedona, and it was awe-inspiring. The Gulf Coast, Siesta Key. Now, Siesta Key is, look it up, 99% crystal, quartz crystal. It's not sand. Just on Siesta Key. Came down from the Appalachian 2,000 years ago. You can walk on Siesta Key. The weather could be 95 degrees, and your feet don't get hot. You know, somebody told me that. I didn't believe it. I looked it up, did the research, and, and dang, if, if it isn't true, and I always keep some siesta key sand, quartz crystal, excuse me, when I write, I sprinkle it around. So those are thin places. Some of those are because of the energy of the earth, right? I think bodies of water, the Gulf of Mexico is really a thin place for Chris and I. Um, some, so some have to do with the energy of the earth. Some has to do with the energy you bring, right? And mine might not always be yours, but I think we're going to share some, you know, I think I find that the Gulf Coast is a very spiritual place. You know, um, I think there's some uh, sacred tribal places that are spiritual for everybody. And other ones like my son's bedroom is just for me. So, but I, I do tell you, go find them. Find the thin places. They're there. So, Joe, for anyone who has lost someone that they'd like to have a closer connection with, how can they get started? Okay. A, I have two great books, you know, my search for Christopher uh, on the other side, and we're not done yet, Pop. And both of those are kind of how-to books. I've read a bunch of really good books. Uh, Bridging Both Realms by John Holland is an amazing one, right? There's some really good books out there, and there's some that are dry and some I don't believe. I got to be honest with you, right? And so you go online and look up, and every time I do a, a meditation, I randomly pick a guided meditation to reach a loved one on the other side. There's traditions that come, you know, rituals. You know, I always light sage to clean the room and it just puts my mind and sense in a, in a different place. I like candles. I turn off the lights. I turn off the computer. I have a picture of Christopher or whoever I want to reach in front of me. Um, I align my chakras, you know, both feet on the ground 
exhaling, saying his name on every chakra level. And then I listen to the guided meditation and then the conversation gets taken over 100% of the time. Now, the only time it didn't happen when I got a message said, not today, pop. So there are ways, you know, look at um, on my website, there's a bunch of interviews. There's, I have, a, I have steps for connecting with spirit. You know, it's just a good start. You know, find a crystal that connects with you. Do I look like a guy that would say, find a crystal that connects with you? Find a crystal. Crystals and stones hold energies that are amazing. You know, work, work at it. You got to do your part. That's a secret part of this. You know, Joe, I absolutely love that you are such a voice that people can actually, you know, open that door of possibility in their minds so that they can start exploring. They can. And, and the alternative is void. I mean, come on, man, take a shot. You know, there's a wonderful poem from uh, uh, Haruki Murakami that says, once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure, in fact, whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what storms are all about. Now, the bottom line is I'm a different guy than I was prior to January 3rd, 2016. Now, if I could undo it and, 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 and forego all the metaphysical knowledge and, 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 and go hit golf balls with my son today, I would. But you can't unring the bell, right? So I live my life two ways now, and it's not always the way I live my life. I live my life to please my God and to make my son proud. And those two tenets, if I follow those two tenets, how wrong can I go in this world, right? Joe, how can people connect with you? My website is joemcquillen.net. A lot of interviews, the guided steps for the meditation, all that stuff. And my email is jbmcquillen, M-C-Q-U-I-L-L-E-N at gmail.com. Reach out, send me an email, we can talk. This is what I'm supposed to do, right? This is what I'm supposed to do. Get the books and read it because they're really helpful from a boots on the ground kind of mentality, right? And, and, and you kind of walk in the path with me in those books, learning as we go, because I, I have very little knowledge walking in. Beautiful. I love your clarity and your commitment. And I so appreciate, so appreciate that you're bringing the spiritual down into this three-dimensional world. <laughs> in I the blue collar it. world, kids. So thank you for being my guest today, Joe. My pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. And thank you for listening to this week's edition of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. You will find all of our conversations on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Come visit me at thoughtchange.com. Learn what energy medicine can do for you. Pick up your copy of Learning to Listen and really start honing your own intuitive skills. And we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.